I've seen that many people encounter difficulties when trying to add horizontal scrolling to their websites. This inspired me to create a video after finding out this cool animated 404 page that not only scrolled horizontally but also featured captivating parallax effects on its images. So I dedicated some time to recreate the scroll animations using scroll trigger and gsap. In today's video, I'll guide you through the process of creating your own horizontal scroll animation paired with a dynamic parallax effect. If you like my work, please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos like this. Now let's not waste any more time and dive straight into the code. As usual, let's start by setting up a container. I'll add a navigation bar with just a single link to keep the page from looking too empty. We'll need two sections, one for the 404 message and images and another that acts like a footer with a closing message. In the 404 section, I'll place an h1 tag with the text page not found to denote the error message. To incorporate images, I'll create div elements, each assigned the class name card and a unique ID for differentiation. Next, I'll add an image from our assets folder into each card. Since we need a few more visuals, I'll replicate this card setup a couple more times, updating the IDs and the images in each. In the outro section, there will be just one h1 tag. That's pretty much it for the HTML setup. Let's move on to styling these elements. Let's start by removing all margins and paddings and ensuring everything uses border box sizing. For the HTML and body tags, we'll make sure they stretch the full width and height, define a font family and apply a black background. We also ensure there is no horizontal scrolling with overflow x set to hidden. Images on our page will fill their containers fully and cover them completely without distorting thanks to the object fit property. Links are styled to have no underlined white color and a larger font size. Our H1 headers, especially noticeable, will be massive, centered, and white. The container that holds everything is given a width of 100% and a really tall height to accommodate our scrolling effect. Our navigation bar is fixed at the top with a simple flexbox centering and some padding, ensuring it's always visible as users scroll. The 404 section is where our horizontal scroll effect lives, spanning a very wide width and having the will change property for better performance during the transformations. Each card holding an image is styled as a square with rounded corners and hidden overflow. They are positioned absolutely within the 404 section to float over our background as we scroll. Specific cards are placed strategically across the wide area to create a dynamic viewing experience as users scroll horizontally. For the outro section, it's positioned absolutely to appear far down the page after all our content. I have set it at 150% of the viewport height from the top. This ensures it won't be visible until the user scrolls through the 404 content. The outro section appearing after our images holds a centered H1 tag with some basic font styling. Finally for mobile users, we adjust the top padding of the 404 section to ensure everything looks good even on smaller screens.
First of all, we need to make sure that GSAP knows we want to use the scroll trigger plugin. This is done by calling the register plugin function. Once the web page is fully loaded, we start by defining a list of cards. Each card has an ID and specific properties like how far it should move to the left and how much it should rotate. We then create a scroll trigger instance for our 404 section. This is where things get interesting. We'll first set the trigger. This animation starts when the 404 section enters the viewport. The animation starts at the top of the viewport and ends after the user scrolls down 900 viewport height. Recall that we set the container's height to 1200 viewport height. This extensive height allows us to utilize the first 900 viewport height of scrolling to animate the 404 section, smoothly transitioning it across x-axis as you scroll down. Scrub allows the animation to progress smoothly in sync with the scroll position. Pin will keep the 404 section fixed during the scroll. In the onUpdate function, we use GSAP to animate the 404 section, which we previously set to a width of 400 viewport width. As you scroll, the function dynamically updates the position based on the scroll's progress. Specifically, the horizontal position X is calculated as minus 350 times the scroll progress in viewport widths. This value being slightly less than the total width ensures that the section moves leftward by the right amount, giving a smooth and controlled scroll-driven animation. Next, we iterate over each card defined in our array using for each. For every card, we create a unique scroll trigger instance. The trigger for each animation is set to the card's ID, ensuring that the animation is tied specifically to that card. The animation begins when the top of the card aligns with the top of the viewport and continues for an additional 1200 viewport height, providing ample space for the effect to unfold. The scrub is set to 1. In the onUpdate function, we dynamically update the horizontal position and the rotation of each card based on how far the user has scrolled. The position shift x is calculated by multiplying the designated end translation by the scroll progress. Since we have set different end translate x values for each card, they will attempt to complete their movements in the same amount of time. This creates a captivating parallax effect where cards appear to move at different speeds, adding some depth. In the same way, the rotation is determined by doubling the product of the card's initial rotation setting and the scroll progress. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.